Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to What a Horse. Um, my name is Jerry Williams, and we gonna we got a good show today. Y'all just stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion Stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another World Grand Champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Water Horse. And I'm Jerry Williams and I'm here with the man himself, Mr. Jerry Harris. We got some uh, Rank and Horse Breeder Celebration start tonight, the 24th through the 27th. It's at the Cooper Steel Arena in Shelbyville. Contact Marissa Dawson, 256-353-7225. Start times 5 p.m. each night. Judges, Ryan Parker, Amber Zan, Chris Zan. I wonder if they'll disagree with each other. <laughs> uh, Alternate judges, Brett Carter and Dale Watts. Then Friday and Saturday night at the Ag Center. The Spring Extravaganza, I'm looking forward to that. Carol Misteldine, 919-437-6597. Start times 4 p.m. Judge is Jennifer Bingham. They've added two classes. Class 18A, Youth All Day Pleasure, and 56A, Youth Park Pleasure. Two real good classes. But also now, don't be up there eating none of that chocolate fudge stuff. Oh yes, I'm gonna show. Get me some. I know you are. <laughs> I, know, I know you'll have to get some of that chocolate fudge. I want to tell you, this week we. Uh, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to say, Travis Wiley. That's a good thing that you offered to do. Travis is one of our young gun trainers. That. Uh, He's offered to help the saddlebreds at any of their shows. Yes. And I, I hope they take him up on it because they're going to find out that if even to, today during the show, some of the things we show, uh, the, the saddlebreds didn't go through the inspection that the walking horse goes through. There's a lot of uh, different things during the the two days of the show, that or three days, that uh, just wasn't 
the same. Yes. Uh, it, they got a lot of breaks. They just don't realize it, and but they will. And and it and it's a shame because the way it is right now, we're we'll be the winners in the long run because as the USDA starts inspecting all these other breeds, they're not going to have enough men or enough money to come to all of our shows, which means we'll have some more good shows like they had up in Cleveland this week. They got a good DQP unit up there checking horses. Curtis Pittman does a great yes, job. Yes, a real good job. But they had some large classes, yes. some huge classes. We'll have that. We could, down here in Middle Tennessee, where show mainly is, they do a good job of yep. inspecting. So I'm, I'm thinking that right now, uh, of course, we've extended a hand to the saddlebreds about getting together and, and seeing what we can do. But these other breeds, the Morgans, the Pasifinos. Yeah. Now, I have one lady who told me she couldn't wait till she watched them inspect the Pasifino. But they did not do any back feet. Uh, I got, we got quite a bit of video that we're going to be showing, but it's just, it, it's a shame. It, it really is because one lady said that we've got nothing to hide and, and the horse horse people feel the same way. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you carry a horse up for inspection, do you think you've got anything they to not, hide? That's right. No, you don't. But that's just it. Normal wear and tear on a horse. And she was talking about chemicals and all this. You don't have to do that. If you work your horse, there's going to be problems. Yeah. And uh, the USDA wants you to train them to where they're pristine all the time. And there's a lot of different steps that the walking horse takes to keep the horses with their hair on their feet, even in the hot weather. So it, it's things that the saddlebred trainers and owners have not gone through yet and they just got a just a little taste of it so they they just need to they need to come and watch one of the inspections that our guys go through you're exactly right about that i know you uh they they want to inspect you all the time yeah every time i go up there they, that must be because you're such a Damn nice guy. They say they do it by random. I told them my name should be random because you randomly pick me all the time. <laughs> your, your name, hey, we're going to do it random. Come here, random. Yeah, we're we're right. going to get you again. <laughs> well, it, I've watched you and others. There's other trainers that every time they go up there, they will stop doing whatever they're doing and go go to that trainer. And when they when they put that target on a yeah. trainer's back, it, it's it's not fun anymore. No, it's not. They take the joy out of it. But uh, now, with everything going on with the suit that the walking horses got filed against them, then they're, it, it's going to get worse. I, I have noticed that they're no longer listing what the violations were on their website. Uh, they've changed that around. And I guess that's because if they can't falsify them, they don't want to listen, listen to them. Yeah, you're uh, right. Uh, I, I gave that uh, documents to them this morning. I sent them to a lady, the 61 page comment. Uh, th this is what we look at. <laughs> they was talking about how good their uh, inspections are. We're, we're gonna show a video in a little bit that comes from their website on the way that they do an inspection. Well, right here is what we go through. You see them trying to part hair, looking for anything that they can find. They didn't go through that this weekend. No. They, everything was just, let's go, this way it is, this way it's gonna be. So now, what are they gonna do the next show? That, that's, that's the question. What, what's going to happen the next time they have a show? Are they going to come in and change again? They went from letting them have the tail brace on to no tail to brace. brace. Yeah. Got to brace it in the warm up ring. Which, and I will be honest, it's a lot different trying to brace a saddle bread 
than it is trying to place a walking a horse. horse. Yeah, you're so they, right. they put those people at a major disadvantage, mm -hmm. and I can't help but believe they knew it. So, but I think we, before we get into all of this, I believe we got something special that, uh, tell us about it. Well, this is my daughter. She's just started her first year going to veterinarian school there. This is her first, she's a, a, um, a freshman there in college. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm very proud of her and everything. She but got an award. Our next award is Outstanding Horse Science Student. And this year's recipient is Miranda Record. Presenting will be Paige Smith. Well, it's intelligent there. I'm going to tell you, it, it just, it does me good to know that this, bring her over to the barn. This thing right here, you know, that's the award she got, but I mean, but you can tell how these kids really love that walking horses, but in her statement, that's what she have, that she wants to be pulled with the Tennessee walking horses and stuff like that. And I mean, that made me, that made me very proud. Hey, I don't blame you. I would be proud too. Yeah. We just need the USDA to get veterinarians in there that honestly look at the horse and understand that's right everything about the horse we got some in there now that that in all honesty I, I keep going back to humane society and what they've done and and how they have got to where they are by more or less just telling a lie they pay they even paid a guy to lie under under oath against the Ringling Brothers. So they're, they're not above anything. They're willing to do anything under the sun that they'll do. All right, we're gonna go into some USDA training. And I want y'all to look at this, and then we're gonna see how it really is. Go ahead with it. Now this is a video that the USDA puts out at the way they train a horse, or inspect a horse. This is the way they inspect. Now this is the way they're supposed to. I want everybody to watch this. And it just so happens that once we got the video law passed to where we could actually video them doing a real inspection, it happened to be the same one that they're using there to show how they inspect a horse. And then you're gonna see how they actually inspect. Because what we did was we videoed them at shows inspecting. You know, I'm gonna tell you, <clears throat> only one I see that spec like they showed right there is Dr. DeSoe. Yeah, now he's, he spec like he's he supposed to. He does it properly. He, he does it properly. Well, you can see right there what she's doing. She's sticking her thumb, nail first, down in the pocket to get that horse to move. Dr. Mullins explains that, and yes. he does it very well. But they do this, they do all kinds of tricks to get them to move. You see the difference? I mean, it's nothing like what, what they say they do. That's not what they do. It's unreal what we what they want people to believe and what actually goes on. And it's like some of the others we got where they pull hair apart, separate it, keep on, keep on, just trying to find anything they can that they can say, well, this right here, you're out. This is out. And you see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we go through. Part of hair and silver is something down there. But that's not what they advertise. No. And, and that's what makes it so bad. That shows just how one-sided and corrupt they are. Because they don't do it properly when they're at a show. And that's all we have asked for for years is to apply the Horse Protection Act the way it is written. Not the way you want it to be, but the way it is written. And that's what they don't do. You know, 
I don't know. I think that if they had to stick to the guidelines that they have, that they say that they was going to do, you know, everything would be all right. But, I mean, you got a lot of people that don't follow them, them rules. Well, doctor, I watch Dr. DeSoe. And he does now. now he, he inspects a horse the way it's supposed to be inspected. And even sometimes now he, he get a little over two. But for the 99% of the time, he's dead on. He understands. Rebecca Nanny. She's another one that does a good job, in my opinion. She's more or less pretty straight. But then you've got some that when they come in there, it's, it's like, hey, we've got to do this and we've got to do that. But here, here is one that they've got you on. Mm -hmm. Or not you, but Jeremy, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was unreal, but here's a real good video for y'all to watch of a horse that they called out for having a field scar under his knee. Hey, this is a two-year-old walking horse filly that came in that got turned down by the government at, a, at this filly's first show. And uh, we're gonna take a look and see what we come up with. We're just, just unload her off the trailer. Drew's walking her for me. We're just looking for any sign of any subtle lameness, any unbalanced movement. As you can see, she's very bright and alert, moving, striding. Walking very good. Okay, Mr. Drew, if you'll bring her over to me. Very nice looking filly, good body condition. Hey, hon. It's all new to you, isn't it? So, yep, so she's a two year old. Teeth are good, everything looks good there. So we're kind of looking at her like the government inspection and the DQP program should go. So we start with the front foot pick it up, bring it around where we can look at it, and you can see, man, this filly has got all the hair you'd want to see, no scars, no blemishes, got good heel support, shoeing looks really good. It's, if you'll hone in there, see that's very smooth, nice pliable skin, tendon sheaths feel good, don't elicit any pain, no swelling anywhere, that all feels good. Come on down, that all palpates good. Then we just go to the right front leg. Easy girl. And we pick it up and do the same thing. There again, we're just looking for any scars or any blemishes. Not even any hair loss here. See, good thick hair, got good heel support. Palpates good, no swelling around the coronary band. The way I understand what's happened, they actually turned her down because of this blemish here on this cannon bone on the inside there. And you can see I'm squeezing. You can see my thumbnail there. I'm squeezing pretty good on that. And there's a splint bone that runs right down through there. We're going to x-ray this filly and see what we got. But see, she's not moving at all. See, I'm palpating, squeezing. <clears throat> she's a lot like a lot of us. Got a little blemishes or a mold or unsightly scar that we don't like anybody to see, but not enough that I know of anything written in the Horse Protection Act that we've had any training with that should be turned down and not allowed to show. But let's bring her over to the x-ray and we'll pop a x-ray here. <clears throat> Get gowned up there for me. All right, if you'll hold the plate. All right, we're going to shoot this blemish here and see kind of what it looks like. There again, it's not painful or anything, it's just right front. Okay. Easy. She's a youngster, so just go slow. Watch your hand. I'm going to collimate this down good. You'll give me just a second here. All right, bring the marker on in a little. Perfect. All right, then we're going to go around the bleak it a little there, Miss Taylor. And can you lead her forward just a step? Perfect, perfect. All right. Put it to the outside, Taylor. There you go. In a little where I can get it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. 
I want to shoot some x-rays here just to show you what's actually underneath and what we're feeling because me feeling you trying to watch on a video sometimes you don't get the full effect. Alrighty, so here is this right front leg. Here's the marker I used to point to the outside of the leg. So here's the inside of the leg. There's the blemish there. There's the splint bone. See, it looks good. That's a blood vessel for Raymond there. This is the cannon bone coming here. There's the other splint bone. So you got a lateral splint bone and a medial splint bone. And then we got this blemish here on the cannon bone. Another view of it. See, the cannon bone is just enlarged there. You can see the same thing, just some <clears throat> enlargement of the bone. But see, the splint bone actually is good. We get a lot of horses in here from a lot of different breeds, a lot of different occupations, careers, ages. And that's a blemish. That horse is not lame. He's not sore. By no stretch of the imagination is anything in the Horse Protection Act written about that. You know, nobody wants to see a horse that's not sound compete regardless of what he does, whether it's a walking horse or thoroughbred or a cutting horse or whatever. This horse is totally sound. This is an injury that occurred probably several months ago. It's just like you hit your bone. The bone thinks it's irritated. It gets inflamed. It starts laying down new bone and you've got a little bony callus there. It'll always be there. It'll never cause any problems. No lameness, no soreness. There again, nothing by the wildest stretch of anybody's imagination would it come under the Horse Protection Act. All right. Now, you know, <laughs> what I'm, got me was what, you, what she told I'm you. I'm so glad we got that done <laughs> and showed that that horse was not blistered because that woman sat there to my face and told me that I blistered that horse and that's why she had that mark on her. Well, she had a problem <laughs> doing the taking the information she didn't I think she was overheard saying that uh well since they wanted to refer the horse back after they said they would not do any yeah. referrals but when the, the DQP and I overheard this he, he said no nope. he said oh, we can't you can't send it back because that has nothing to do with HPA well that's when she was heard to say well I'll do it for inflammation so uh, uh, that's, that's, that's what proof we put, yeah right there which you know well that's what we put up with that's and right so it's time for us to take a short pause for our sponsors but we'll be right back <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee walking horse is the perfect family horse by young and old, whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee walking horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also, remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you'll own one tomorrow. That's a fact. Welcome back. Tell you what, Jerry, we're, we're, <laughs> we're not done. We're, we're going to show some inspections from uh, the Saddlebred Show and point out, like right there, what do you see wrong there? High band right I mean, off the bat. Yeah. 
that horse got to show. Ours wouldn't even, they would, would, if that was us, they would not allow us to adjust Just the band. That's right. We'd be turned down. And right here, if you look all the way to the back, that guy is holding that horse's head up close to his bed, whereas we have to be 18 inches away. Now, I will say this, they changed it. But when they first started, they come in with a tail brace, holding up close to the head, holding the horses, and they requested them to make a change. And I got news for everybody that's in the saddlebred industry. Every time they come, they're going to want more and more, yep. just like they have done the walking horse. And I've heard people say, well, the USEF will protect the saddlebreds. That's like saying I'll put a piece of paper between me and a man with a shotgun and I'll be protected. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. ESC is not going to be able to help you. It's something that the saddlebred people are going to have to get together, their trainers, their owners, and decide to stand up and fight it before it gets out of hand. Because right now, the way I'm looking at it, the walking horse is the only one that's going to win in this. And that's because they won't be able to cover as many shows. At one time, they wasn't doing any other shows. Yeah. Just the walking horse. They always said, well, we don't have to inspect these other breeds. They're not doing anything. They're not doing anything. When they turned the first horse down at the Saddlebred show, that was it. That showed they hadn't done their job for over 50 years because they was too, too much into pointing the finger at us. You watch on this video right here, this horse has got movement I in know. his leg right here. I know. Now, like you say, in the walking horse injury, if that walking horse would do that, he wouldn't be able to show. That's right. But she let a lot of them show that did. And they, they did not let some of them show. They turned one down for a rub that they said they knew it was because he had on a new set of boots. But anytime you work a horse, you're going to have to do something to protect the feet. Now here's one that showed, come back out to be inspected like we have to do. Instead of inspecting them, we passed him on through. Don't have to. So th these are discrepancies that we saw this weekend in the way that the USDA inspects. Now they're going to be inspecting, and it was said that they was going to a Rocky Mountain show, but they're going to have to do the Morgans, the Bosofinos, the Saddlebreds, which they're doing here. So they won't be able to come to Fox, every one of our shows. Fox Riders. Fox, yeah, the whole, the whole bunch. They're going to have to get them all. And then they're still not going to be able to get the data until they inspect them the same way that they inspect the Tennessee walking horse. And they don't. That was obvious this weekend. I, my phone stayed lit up. They're doing this, they're doing that. They're not doing this, they're doing that. Why aren't they inspecting these horses like they do ours? They're trying to create data that they're not getting. That's exactly what they're doing. See, that horse jumped in. This is what I'm talking about, Jerry. Now, if that was you up there, what would they tell you? They would be right, taking information <laughs> on me and send me back to the trailer. That's right. So this, this people, they, they send me back with the trailer one and didn't even do that. Yeah. They wanted this video that showed that it was sound and didn't have no blemish or whatever. Well, these are these are problems that that the USDA is going to be trying to prove that they don't need to inspect other breeds, but their ladies they're videoing too, and they're seeing what we see. As a matter of fact, that same VMO right there is the one that done me on my mare. I know. And if you notice, she's already inspected this horse longer than the lady in their training video. That's right. 
and she's only on one foot. So, you know, that tells you a lot to sitting there watching that right there. Well, I have learned one thing, that the USDA, when they make a mistake and they realize it, they'll change right quick, like putting all those false violations out on their website. Now, I can't find, I see where they inspected horses, but they're not listing any violations. And that, that to me is just another sign of guilt. Remember at one time we could have a second opinion. Yes. Well, they got to where they couldn't agree with each other. So then we couldn't have a second opinion anymore. And if you watch the way that this lady inspects and then watch the way Dr. DeSoul inspects, there is a world of difference. You exactly right. A world of difference. Now she found something, but she turned around the horse, let the horse show anyway. And see, in the walking horse, if we've got anything on the outside of the hoof, the horse can't show. So a splint on a quarter crack, or I was even told that they use a Pacific tape. But that horse moving, jerking all That's over right. the place, we wouldn't be able to show. And they, the only reason we're showing this is to let the saddlebred people know that what they're in for, because they thought this weekend was bad. What really, what, what I thought was really bad was they let them come up with a tail brace Friday night and then made them brace out there in the warm up ring Saturday night, which is, it, it's, a, it's a lot of difference. You're talking about two different type braces. See, this horse doesn't have a brace on. Now this is Dr. DeSoul. Yes. I tell you, another, you just look. You know, you look at the difference right yeah. there on checking. Major difference. And I sit there and watch. Now he's checking that horse. He's going on through and 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 you know, he's doing his job. He's doing his job like he's supposed to do. He's not trying to create something. He's looking. If he sees it, he's going to take care of it. If he doesn't see it, he's going on. That's the way it's supposed to be That's done. That's the way it's supposed to be done right there. And I don't know what it is about the ladies and what they do, but if they think they're a better veterinarian than that man, man that's right. That they're in for a rude awakening. Because I'd go to him 10 times before I'd let Me one too. of them touch my horse. But they, they was other things in there. They even had one one time where they let them swap handlers. I've never seen them let, yeah. let a walking horse guy change span unless he had a horse he had to go, another horse he had to come and bring in there. Well, now, you I know, it's just handlers. like we we go, we are robbers when they come to the house. If no. somebody else walk in there, they, they throw the, the guards and everything else up. <laughs> Here we go to the Spokies, 50 and over winner. Twisted with honors and Allison Armstrong. I tell you what, 
that lady's got some good horses. She got some real good horses. Hey. She's starting out the year just right. She is now. She went up there and, and won. She, well, she won when she was down here at trainer show, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So she, she's on a roll right now. She's doing real good. I'm waiting for her to show Troubadour because I just got a funny feeling that she's going to bust out with you. Yeah. Right here, me and Pocahontas. That horse has never lost a pro-am, and it's always been unanimous. Yeah. Every time. That's a outstanding there mare. There is a, a good mare. Oh, we got some good mares. Real good ones. And that was a good class. Yes, it was. Yeah, that's right what here, I'm Cousin Bob, he was reserving there. Shane, like, this Shane just bought that horse not long ago. Yes. Now. He, he's, uh, he's very happy with that. Yeah. Cousin Bob. Old Tanner. Tanner got married. Yeah. I am Mighty Jose and Shane Porterfield. That's a good horse, real good horse. Yeah, well, he, he's doing quite a bit of breeding. Too. Yeah. Sure is. Shane's a super good guy now. Shane he, is. He's, he's a real nice guy. Very supportive, and I, I do appreciate it. Right here, twisted with honor again. Yeah. Now he came back and won the state class. Pretty, pretty, pretty spiffy there, buddy. Yeah. Pretty spiffy indeed. <clears throat> I know Allison was picked. But that says a lot about our horse. Mm -hmm. He showed twice, and the government was there. Yeah. So. Can't ask for nothing no better than that. Nope, I'm going to let you do it this time. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse. But I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communications. Welcome back. Well, you know, Jerry, we're going we're gonna to go and look at some uh, victory passes and video from the Okoye show. But... People need to, one, one thing everybody needs to know, a lot of the training methods that the walking horse uses, Saddlebred's used to. Oh yeah, a lot of the ones that Saddlebred used, we use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though we've got things in common that we need to come together and work together on. Oh yeah. Winner of this class was Golden Honors and Dan Waddell for Kim Lewis. She's all, She's all ambushed. Hayden Burks was reserved, addicted to 
Dior, Cody Woodford, a bit of extreme Drew Graves, and bourbon spice. Bet you that's good, bourbon spice. Mm -hmm. Kim Lewis is, and George, both of them, they have got some, oh, good, yeah, horses. Got some good horses. Real they good horses. Real good horses. They're good honors too. Buddy. Yeah, I mean they 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 uh I don't know they they're just a fantastic couple. Yeah, I like talking to George now. He he he's a pistol. That's a great place to have a horse. Oh show. yeah, it's a good place to have a horse show. I wish they put a, a blind around it though, yeah. to where when the, when it's still daylight, you don't get them dark spots. Yeah. But right there he is. You can tell how he's walking. <laughs> Golden Honor and Dan Waddell, George and Kim Lewis. He's a good one. Now, right here was something that kind of shocked me because I did not know this young lady was that old. But she had to leave the juvenile class and come into the <laughs> ladies. And I, I said something to her grandpa. I said, I thought she had another year. But he's a lucky strike, and Aubrey Derrickson for Ralph Derrickson took the blue in the amateur ladies class. He's relentless, and Skylar Nipper was reserved. A ringmaster, Amy McCurdy. And R&R Jose McKenzie Cowan. Old timer Riley Ross finished out the ribbon. But now, that's one way of going in. Yeah. If you're going into the amateur adult, you might as well come out in style. Oh yeah, you were right. And so she could say she's undefeated as an adult. Win that first one, get it done, get it out of the way. Yeah, that's a good horse we got. She's a good rider. That is a good horse. She does a real good job. I just didn't think she was old enough to be in the amateur ladies. What's that old same time flight? Right, yeah. And what I was, was talking about, the, I seen some of it where they said the, the uh, Inspectors were real nice and uh, eager to answer questions and they asked questions. I'm sitting there thinking, yep, spider in the fly. Spider in the fly. This video is courtesy of my good buddy Bob Bob, Bob Roach. Get tongue tied. Yeah, him. Mr. Bob, he does a good job on his video right now. I tell you what, Bob's a good guy now. He, he is. Every now and then, though, he has to lay that camera down because he, he puts on that ride. Yeah. Mm hmm. He lets his wife do the video and her Charlie one. A lucky right there, he's a lucky strike, and Aubrey Derrickson took the blue. I know she was happy. Oh, yeah. Get that first one. That's a nice one. That's up there. It is a nice one. That's a real nice horse. To the blue. He's a lucky strike and 
your lady amateur walking champion. Oh, Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. My grandkids want to go look at horses. They just don't want them to ride them <laughs> or show them. Breaks my heart. Now, right here is a good was a good class, and I, I liked the way it was, but it was changed. Park Performance Rider Cup. A perfectionist took the blue with R.M. Kelly for Tommy Jowers' family. Limestone Dan Waddell was reserved, but at the show. They called out Limestone as the winner, mm -hmm. and a perfect a perfectionist reserve. So the ad we've got is got Limestone as the winner. Plea bargain and Jackson Jackson Latham was third, and here's Charlie again, Stacy Gunner. These two good horses, perfectionist oh, yeah. good horse too, but. Now, I like that in the dance. Reverse at Flatwalk. Reverse at Flatwalk. Running wall, Ty. Take that deep seat. Let's go, running wall. They had a good show. Yeah, they did. They had a real good show. And that, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. And, and I did not see anything in the when I was watching that looked out of place, looked out of whack. And I mean, when you're on a horse and they, they get out of whack, it's yeah. hard to just jerk it away. But as you can see, there's no, you just go from a horse doing his job to yeah. another horse. So. We'd be a lot better off if the if the government just come and observe. Yeah. And if, there he is, Limestone and Dan Waddell for George and Kim Lewis. He was actually reserved, but he got to wear the blue out of the ring. <laughs> Mr. True Blue and Jake Jacobs. Now he won the uh, the counter class. Okay. He broke him out. That's the first time he had shown. And uh, I watched him. He went straight into that counter, buddy. Nothing flat. Looking good all the way. I told him I sit down. He's good deal. He's getting run. He could show him in the pony class, or he could show him in the, the yeah. amateur mm -hmm. canner class. It's a nice horse. Nice horse, real nice horse. Real good. Yeah, Jake is good for the industry. He's a yeah, nice yeah. guy. And right here is I Sang Dixie and Allie Joe. Now, she was reserved in her class, but she put on a heck of a show. Heck of a class. She just likes to ride. Oh yeah. yeah I'm gonna tell a little story about her a little bit later on. But uh, she tickles me. She considers herself a professional. <laughs> but, uh, Mayor Bill. And right here is Mayor Bill and Kim Lewis. Kim's such a lovely lady inside now. She's got a good heart. Oh yeah. But her and George now, they're they're a pair of aces in my book. She, she's a good rider. Real good. Real good rider. 
Mayor Bill, he was a steak horse. He'd been, oh, yeah, he'd, he'd been, been around. He'd been now. around. You can get it done. Right here is your amateur amateur, but Ali Joe says it's a pro-am. <laughs> so uh, Jake was going to ride the second way, and, and Ali Joe corrected him, and she said, the professional goes the second <laughs> way. <laughs> so he, he, in other words, Ali Joe put him in his place. Thanks, he, yeah. He's amateur. So the Hoss and Ali Joe and Jake <laughs> Jacobs took the blue. Nico Moon and Mike Powers and Steve Powers and Reserve and Outer Banks, Marguerite Thomas and Shane Porterfield. But I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. He told me that I couldn't. I couldn't outdo it. But there she is now. Yeah. She's a she's a pistol, and I mean a pistol. I'll tell you what, I, I watched the video the of here and then her the mother took one the that we were going to get part of. And I want you to look at there. The Hoss. Now I'm telling you, that, that young lady. That's something right there, buddy. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to watch her because she's, the year goes on. Her and that little pony. Oh yeah. I mean now, they they gonna be tough. They is. That was a real nice old. She rides him good too. Yeah. Now this is Amanda's video, this part right here. Right here, the state class. Super good state class. Honor and remembering Dan Waddell took the blue for Kim Lewis. Showing honors, Larry Latham for Don Bridges. He's a lucky strike, R.M. Kelly for Ralph Derrickson. Cassie Tenda, Chris Elton for Hicks and Connor. And boss on gin, Terry Gibbons for Doug and Gene Brown. First two horses by honors. Yep. Mind me, I've got a one that we're picking to start carting. Yep. Can't wait. While we're watching this, I just want to remind everybody. The saddlebreds and the walking horse, we need to work together. Yes. And stop this. Do something to bring the HPA into something that people can live with that's good for the industry and the horse. Yeah. Right now, it's not good for the industry or the horse. No, it's not. It's just, uh, I just, a lot of it I don't understand. Uh, my belief is this, if you're right, you, you shouldn't have to lie or falsify documents in order to prove it. And, uh, if you've done your job in the last 50 years, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Yep. I mean, like you say, we got to be a horse family, regardless of what breed of horse you show. That's it. You just got to be a family of the horse industry and come together. But you know, years ago, I can remember the USDA saying that they were going to other breeds and they could see no reason to inspect. Well. If they had looked and opened their eyes, they would have seen plenty of reasons to inspect, but they didn't. And to me, that was an injustice for the walking horse and the, and the saddlebreds. Because now, the saddlebreds, what they thought was just fine for years, they're finding out is not. Yeah. Walking horse state class winner, honor and remember Dan Good Waddell horse. for George and Kim Lewis. A good horse boy. I'm looking for Kim to end up on that horse sooner yeah. or later. He's a good one. 
Wives and daughters have a way of doing that. <laughs> Dan had a good weekend. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean he, he he won several classes and was reserve in several. His his barn did very well. Oh yeah. Very well. But Dan does a good job. Well he's got he, a lot of good horses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got some fantastic help. Yeah. So all of that blends in together. He works it's, hard at it. Mm -hmm. All of them. Him, Cameron, all of them work hard at it. Well, I know the day we was out there he was on and off, on and off. I had seen that at one other barn. And uh, that was his mentor, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy's, you go to yeah. Jimmy. You want to talk to Jimmy? You wait until Jimmy takes time. Yeah. Because he's going to be on off, on off, on off. Now, if an amateur's in there and the amateur rides, he may stand there and watch. But he's watching, paying attention to them. He ain't going to talk Until to you. Yeah. So, so that's the way it is. All right. I want to remind everybody that tonight starts the Rackinor Show in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and then Friday night we will be at the Ag Center. We'll be set up, and Bob Broach will be set up. I think uh, Dean Nam's going to live stream it, so the show's going to be well covered. I strongly suggest that if you're in Saddlebred country, come and watch the inspections at the Walking Horse Show, especially if the USDA shows up. Yes. They, uh, it's a lot different, and, and it, it's just a lot more intense. There's a lot of hair pulling and it, it's just completely different. You, it, it would help you to fully understand. And you can go to the Rackinor show. I talked to one young lady, I'm not gonna call her name, but uh, she uh, uh, said that there's, there have Rackin horses in her barn. She's a saddlebred trainer. And I want to extend a thank you, a big thank you to Doreen Norris for supplying video of the inspections. I want to thank you yes. uh, and everybody else that helped. Now, some said that they rather not have their name mentioned, uh, and I don't blame them. One, one young lady says, I'm a minor. I don't need to be on there. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. But it, it's people working together is going to help us all. Well, any breed of horse, you need to go to a walking horse show and watch the inspections because sooner or later it will be coming towards you and so you can know exactly what's going on. Well, the quarter horse people already know it because yes. they, they've been visited, but that Western Alliance, now, buddy, they, uh, they're they dead on. They yeah. realize where all this is headed. So we all need to band together, work together, and do whatever we can to show what's going on and let people realize that I mean, animals are animals, and I love them, but there's going to be instances where there may be a rub or a scrape on a foot that wasn't abuse, it wasn't yep. intended, just like checking the back feet. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous that, that in my ridiculous. opinion, that's right. especially in saying it's intentional. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what really gets me is they say it's intentional, which uh, it's not. But we will see probably a guest next week. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody enjoy the show this Be weekend. Be safe. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.